In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down Shaq and Kobe and what made them the best duo ever. If you are currently on a basketball team and you have an amazing guard and a center or you're one of those two who are together like Kobe and Shaq were, this video is definitely going to help you excel your game. Let's get down. Let's check out Shaq and Kobe. So while Shaq and Kobe were both number one players on the Lakers, they worked extremely well together. Kobe was able to attack the rim and draw help defenders who just so happened to be helping off of Shaq and he was able to send up alley-oops to Shaq because of course he is unstoppable on that alley-oop. Kobe was also very good at looking for Shaq down court so that he could get him that ball. Shaq was actually pretty well dominant in the full court. This next clip is a bounce pass into Shaq, and anytime that you're trying to feed a good low post player, you have to do a bounce pass, because if we rewind right here, what do we see? A hand up, you can't put a pass over top of this player, you need to be able to fake high and then bounce down low, and that's what we see here. Once Shaq gets that ball, he's looking over his shoulder right away. That's scanning what that defender is doing, but also looking for backdoor cutters. And at this point, he's able to do a quick jump stop in the middle of that key so that he can go up for that mid-range shot. Shaq was also very good at using his off arm and hooking players so that they get stuck essentially behind him in jail. And then he was able to use his body, go up into those players, and of course get some massive dunks. Shaq also made Kobe's life a bit easier because if anyone was able to get past Kobe Bryant... Even though this is not Kobe Bryant, this is just still a good example, where if anyone really got past Kobe, it was basically uh, shut down at the rim by Shaq. And then any time that Shaq would, or any time Kobe was double or triple team, Shaq was usually wide open. So what teams usually did, because Shaq was usually in the high or low post, is that they usually doubled that player and then he was able to get that pass from Kobe because Kobe was obviously a good passer as well. And, of course, Shaq was able to then destroy the rim. And then, whenever Kobe Bryant was able to attack players, for example, here he got past Pippen, but he was then faced with a secondary or even a third defender because Kobe was such a great offensive threat. In this case, he had three players who were on him. When he attacked that rim, Shaq was usually in the Russian spot, which is basically right underneath that backboard or right behind that backboard, where Kobe could send up these lobs and get them right to Shaq for that alley-oop dunk. And let's not forget that they really put together a lot of championships. So the thing with Shaq and Kobe was, of course, they did battle each other a lot on the court, but they really tried to push each other. Kobe more pushing Shaq than anything, but these two players were dominant for a very long time because they are two different positions and they were two of the best players in each of those positions. You had a small forward slash shooting guard who could attack the rim, score in the mid-range and score threes while attacking the basket and drawing multiple defenders. Usually those multiple defenders were coming, uh, were coming off of Shaq and he was able to send up alley-oops to Shaq. When Shaq was in the low post, he was able to do quick sh uh, fake passes and then bounces into that low post to get Shaq that ball. After he made those passes, he would cut away either to a different spot on the perimeter or to the rim and sometimes get those pocket passes from Shaq for the reverse. These are ways that you can play. If you, if you are a dominant guard and you've got a dominant center on your team, these are options for you to play. And on the flip side, if, you can, if you're a center and you've got players who are really good at attacking the basket, if you can sit in the Russian spot be along that baseline, you can get yourself open for a lot of different opportunities. I hope that this video has helped you. If it has, hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys again next time.